Welcome to the second video in the Fun with Physiology Let's Get Cellular series. In this video, we are going to cover how magnesium and chloride influence cellular action potentials. But before delving into how magnesium and chloride affect the action potential, I think it's worth revisiting the basic schoolhouse theory again. So rather than thinking of the cell as a biologic structure, think of it as a schoolhouse. Now for any physiologic response to occur, the action in relation to the schoolhouse needs to be occurring on the inside rather than the outside. Remember we have three students that come to our school. We have sodium, potassium, and calcium. All three of these students are cations, which means they are positively charged ions. Now sodium is the most important student because they are the facilitators of physiologic action. They love the fresh air, they love being outside, so that's where they spend their entire day. Potassium isn't quite as optimistic as sodium is but they love the predictability and the control of being inside and that's where they spend their entire day. And calcium are those awkward freshmen that are hanging out with sodium only because they are willing to hold their doors for them. When we have the majority of the available sodium and calcium on the outside of the school and the majority of available potassium on the inside of the school, that's referred to as the resting potential. When the cell is in the state of a resting potential, that's when the school bus driver comes in the form of an electrical impulse and tells sodium to move into the cell. Now calcium has the agreement to go to the door, so they do. Sodium moves in, and once we have sodium moving in, then we have depolarization. When we have depolarization, that's when we get physiologic action. Then he tells potassium to move out of the schoolhouse, and when potassium moves out, that's when we have repolarization. Repolarization is the stopping of depolarization or the cessation of depolarization. Just like it is in a busy restaurant, calcium's holding the door, so they get stuck holding the door for sodium as well as potassium. But once potassium moves out, then calcium no longer needs to hold the door open, and they go into the schoolhouse with sodium. Now remember, the school bus driver has a bad attitude, and he only does his two jobs, which is moving sodium in and potassium out, and once that happens, he leaves. When he's gone, sodium's on the inside saying, you know what, it really stinks in here. Potassium's on the outside saying, you know what, it really stinks out here. So sodium moves back out, calcium's going to follow because they hang out wherever sodium's at, and then potassium's going to move back in. When we have this process occurring, that's referred to as the return to resting potential. And then once we have the majority of available sodium on the outside, calcium on the outside, and potassium on the inside, then we have achieved resting potential again, and the school bus driver is instructed to come back and start the process of depolarization and repolarization. So again, this is an important concept because this is going to be the starting point for us to be able to talk about how magnesium and chloride influences this normal cellular action potential. So if that review was a little too fast or you're still a little confused about the concept, you can refer back to the EMS1 article or to the first video of this series to get a more in-depth and a slower review of that concept. So before talking about how magnesium and chloride affect cellular action potentials, we are going to talk about calcium. We're going to expand its role a little bit within this analogy. It's still going to open the door for sodium, but I also want to talk about calcium as a primary neuromuscular transmitter. So what this means is calcium facilitates the contraction of striated muscle tissue. That muscle tissue can be anywhere in the heart, on skeletal muscles, or in muscles in smooth tissue. An increase in calcium moving into the schoolhouse will typically result in increased muscle contraction. Conversely, decreased levels of calcium results in muscle relaxation. So magnesium is another cation, which means it's a positively charged ion. And I want you to think of magnesium as a big bully. Now magnesium particularly enjoys bullying calcium because they're young and vulnerable. They grab onto calcium and they prevent them from opening doors for sodium. Now as a reminder, sodium is a door snob, and they may or may not go through a door if it isn't held for them. This bullying results in less sodium moving into the schoolhouse because calcium isn't holding the door for them. Since sodium is the facilitator of an action and needs to move inside the schoolhouse to initiate a physiologic response, magnesium will decrease this function because it won't allow calcium to open doors for sodium. So let's go back to the schoolhouse theory and see what this looks like when we integrate magnesium into this illustration. We're starting at the resting potential, which means the majority of available sodium and calcium are on the outside and the majority of available potassium is on the inside. Since we're at the resting potential, the school bus driver is going to come back to do his two jobs. But before he can instruct sodium to move in, 
Magnesium is going to grab onto calcium and start bullying them around and prevent them from going to the door. This results in sodium coming up against a door that's not being held open for them. So some of the sodium may move in, but the majority is going to hang outside because they are door prima donnas and they're not going to go in on their own. So I want to remind you of the school bus driver's bad attitude. His job is to tell sodium to move in, but he doesn't have the responsibility to make sure that that actually happens. But nonetheless, the school bus driver has a second job, which is potassium out, and he does instruct potassium to move out, and it does move out. So what happens at the end of the day is we have a minimal amount of sodium moving in, and the majority of potassium moving out. So what we end up with is a large amount of negativity residing in the schoolhouse. And this negativity prohibits the cell from reaching enough positivity on the inside to depolarize and create a physiologic response. So as a result of the bullying from magnesium, sodium is not going to move in, and that means that depolarization is not going to happen, or it is going to be dramatically minimized. Now let's talk about chloride. Chloride is an anion. What that means is it's a negatively charged ion. I want you to think of chloride as a Debbie Downer. Wherever Debbie Downer resides, she will negatively overwhelm the positivity associated with any cation. Because Debbie Downer is so negative, school administrators don't want her to interact with students inside the schoolhouse. Because of her negativity, the doors get locked whenever Debbie Downer comes to the schoolyard. But Debbie Downer is persistent, and she always seems to find another way to get into the schoolhouse. She does this by finding doors that school administration hasn't unlocked, and works her way into the schoolhouse. Once she's inside, her negativity prevents the school from initiating any associated physiologic function. Moving chloride inside the schoolhouse will offset any positivity of cations that are either residing in the school or will move into the school. By decreasing the positivity inside the school, the cell will not achieve the cellular action potential that it needs or the positivity that it needs to be able to depolarize. This is another mechanism the cell can utilize to decrease physiologic function independent from the influence of sodium. So you may be asking yourself again, what is the relevance to the typical EMS provider? These concepts provide EMS providers with the understanding and context to know why their patient is presenting the way that they actually are presenting. We've introduced two separate mechanisms the body uses to decrease and or minimize physiologic function. Magnesium, whether naturally released by the body or administered from a healthcare professional, is one mechanism that decreases the influx of sodium by inhibiting calcium's ability to hold the door open for sodium. Chloride, being an anion, accomplishes a similar end through a totally different mechanism. By offsetting the positivity of cations, cells are prevented from achieving adequate polarity to initiate a cellular action potential. Benzodiazepines are a perfect example of this mechanism associated with chloride. Versed, Valium, and Ativan are examples of medications that facilitate this process. So in summary, there are multiple ways that cells can increase or decrease their ability to control function. Physiologic action revolves around the initiation and spread of depolarization by bringing sodium into the cell membrane. Magnesium decreases cellular action potentials by preventing calcium from holding doors open for sodium. Thus, sodium is not going to move in, and with sodium not moving in, we're not going to have a facilitated action. The anion chloride decreases cellular action potentials by offsetting the positivity of cations through its negativity. So this is the end of the second video. Again, our goal was to try to simplify these concepts and try to relate them back to the EMS provider, and I hope we did accomplish that through this video. Thank you for stopping in, and stay tuned for the next article as well as subsequent video as we have fun with physiology and continue to get cellular.